next is the sum and the linear combinations of random variables so sum and linear combinations of random variables so here is the uh, some concepts of this so suppose we have a random variable x which has which is normal with a um, mean of mu1 and a sigma square which is a variance and there is another random variable which is y which has also normal with a mean of mu2 and a sigma square and these two uh, variables are independent of each other in that situation if we have another random variable say u which is represented by x and y in that situation this is also going to be normal so that is a important contrib important uh, property of a normal distribution that the sum of two normal distributions is also going to be normal and then for this expected value of u is going to be sum of the expected value of x and expected value of y and we know that the expected value of x is going to be mu and this is going to be mu2 so this is the expected value and the same applies for the variance the variance of sigma square of u is also going to be a sum of sigma square of 1 and sigma square of 2 so variance of x and y is the sum of variance of x plus y is going to be the sum of variance of x and variance of y and and if you have it's just not just two if you have multiple x plus y plus z dash 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 then you will just add their uh, variances so if you have x1 plus x2 plus x3 x n so their expected value is mu1 mu2 mu3 and uh, the the expected value of the um, their combination is going to be n mu1 plus mu2 plus or mu n and uh, same would be the with the sigma square which would also be n sigma 1 square plus uh, sigma 2 square sigma n square so this is the sum of the independent normal random variable and then we have the linear combinations of the random variable so what is linear combination of a random variable is you can also have a linear combination of random variables so if we have a random variable x which is defined as n mu sigma square and we we do a whole bunch of linear uh, uh, combinations of it we're going to multiply this by a and then we're going to add b to it for all the um, all values of x uh, then we get a new variable which is y y is a new variable which is ax plus b so what will be the the expected value of y the expected value of y is just going to be a mu which is the expected value of x plus b so that is the expected value of y and the sigma square and the variance of y will also be related to this however when you add something to a variable it doesn't get added into the variance only the the factor that you multiply it goes there so if the variance if the vari variable is x and you multiply the and the new variable you create is y which is just a x plus b and the variance of x is sigma square variance of y is just going to be a square sigma square the b doesn't uh, count so that's the linear combination of a if we have a several random variable 
we will uh, just have this that uh, there is multiple random variables that have mu1 sigma1 square all the way to mu k sigma k square and a new random variable is v so it's uh, it is formed by the linear combinations uh, of this uh, which is just going to be k1 x1 and uh, a k x mean x k and then you add b to it so this is the same thing because b can just be taken out um, the all of these are constant so b will also have a normal distribution which will be defined as a1 mu1 a k mu k plus b but the b doesn't get included into the uh, variance and the variance is just going to be a1 square sigma1 square plus a k plus all that a k sigma k so on so that will be the new value of the of the v moving on to uh, another concept called the the i i d normal variable so if we have a bunch of measurements of the same condition say example just going to be temperature of the day and we measured a bunch of measurements of that x1 x2 they are all measuring the same thing they are all measuring the temperature of a particular time say one hour period so they are expected to be the same so they are all they are all random variables and they are all independent of each other we can take independent measurements so they all have expected values and the expected value of x1 and expected value of x2 and expected value of xn they are all mu1 mu2 mu n but they are all going to be the same because they are all actually measuring the same thing so they are all going to be mu okay and and all these values are in, so since now all these values are also independent but we can also take an average of these values where we're going to go from i from 1 to n and then you're going to divide it by n and then it's going to be if you take the average of all the values then you basically the not the average of mu's taking the average of all the values and dividing it by n you're going to get something called x bar so x bar is the average of all these values but x bar is also going to have just an expected value of mu because they are really measuring just the same thing so multiple measurements we have taken of a simple of one thing which can be anything say temperature for in our case and all of them have an expected value each each vary each measurement in itself would have a variation in, in it and so it will have each will have an expected value which will all be mu but then you can also add them up and come up with a average of those measurements which will also have an expected value but the expected value since they are measuring the same thing is just going to be mu going uh, further into this just trying to add another page here so uh, so that's the expected value of the iid uh, all these measurements are independent that's what iid means they are independent and identically distributed they are they are independent and identically distributed now what happens to their um, variance so they all will have a variance associated with them also and the variance is going to be sigma square so when you sum the variances of them so 
so the variance of x bar is going to be 1 by n square variance of x1 plus variance of xn that will be the variance of x bar so this variances are just sigma square they all have the same variances of sigma square and so this will be n times of these one of the n gets n n of sigma square divided by n square so this will become sigma square by n so that is the variance of x bar which means the standard deviation of x bar is going to be sigma upon under root n so that's a important characteristic uh, that these values which are uh, multiple measurements we have taken each of these measurements may have a expected value of mu and a variance of sigma but when you pool them as long as they are independent and identically distributed the the standard deviation of the pooled uh, variable x bar will be sigma upon under root n where n is the number of values that you have taken so the, the variance becomes narrower so far all we have done is that these are just variables they're not uh, we, we haven't uh, we, they're just random variables we haven't assumed anything about the distribution as long as they are independent but if we know that each of these results are normally distributed each of these are normally distributed then x bar will also have a normal distribution with a expected value of mu which remains the same and variance of sigma square upon n so as long as these values are iid which is independent and identically distributed their sum or average will have will be normally distributed with a expected value of mu and variance of sigma square over n now we'll do uh, a few questions related to this uh, three questions um, so the first question is suppose a claim to be settled by an insurer during a year so there is an insurer and uh, we have we are separating for a year within n uh, n claimants and they are independent normal variables with identical mean and variances he uses this formula called coefficient of variation and he defines it as a ratio of standard deviation to mean so standard deviation to mean that is his uh, coefficient of variation as a measure of uncertainty of the claims uh, so that is for each of these n claimants and then he aggregates all these n claimants uh, claimants all of them over a year so what we want to know is by what factor does the coefficient of variation of aggregate of this change when the insurer business expands from one claimant to n so how does this change so in normal distribution the mean increases by a factor of so coefficient of variation is sigma upon mu and when you aggregate them the you will add the the mu1 plus mu2 plus mu3 so you will add them and the variance also you add them for a uh, aggregation so you will add so so you add all the standard deviations uh, all the variance so you add all the variances which will be sigma1 square plus sigma2 square plus sigma3 square but as far as we consider the standard deviation this is just going to be uh, under root 
so they are variance is in improving by n so standard deviation will be in increasing by under root n so for a, a combined variable uh, which is uh, times n of this this will increase by uh, under root n for sigma that because that's how it will increase and n times mu this can also be sigma upon under root n mu so basically what it's increasing is one upon under root n uh, the coefficient of variation is going to increase by uh, one upon under root n the next question is x y and z are independent normal random variables with a mean of 1 2 and 3 and they have a variance of 3 7 and 6 now we want to calculate the probability of a linear combination of this variable which is let's just say that is u of x plus y minus z so that is the linear combination and we want that to be less than 4 and what is the probability of absolute value of x plus y minus z being less than 4 now here again we have to go back to uh, first understanding what that means what that means is that x plus y minus z is less than 4 less than plus 4 and more than minus 4 it is between plus 4 and minus 4 so once we understand this all we have to do the oh we also have to calculate its uh, uh, its mean value so its mean and so what so if this value is u if this value is u what is the uh, mean of u mean of u is just you add them up so 1 plus 2 plus 3 that is going to be 3, 4, 5, 6. So uh, actually it is uh, x plus y minus z. So 1 plus 2 minus 3. So that's going to be 0. And what's the variance? And variance has another rule that you always add it irrespective of the sign. So you add it. So 3 plus 7 plus 6. That is going to be 16. So what is the sigma? That is going to be 4. So now we have this normal distribution we know that uh, linear combinations are always lean normal so this will also have a normal distribution and its normal distribution has a uh, mean of 0 and a sigma of 4 and we want to know the value between minus 4 and plus 4 but for that i need to first calculate what these means what is the z value of 4 so that is just going to be uh, 4 minus 0 divided by 4 that is going to be 1 and the, here it's going to be uh, minus 4 minus 0 upon 4 that is going to be minus 1 so we need to calculate this so this is plus 1 and this is minus 1 so all we need to do is to calculate this little area in between the two and how do we calculate that thing and we have seen that um, the area this whole area or um, uh, this whole area is going to be represented by pi of 1 and what will this area be represented as this little area by red this area is the same as this area and what is this area this area is nothing but pi of 1 so to get the area here all we have to do is to do pi of 1 minus 1 minus pi of 1 which is going to be pi of 1 minus 1 plus pi of 1 which is going to be 2 pi of 1 minus 1 
experimentally measurement of a physical quantity u of t function measurement of a relatively normal distribution with a mean of a and a standard deviation of 0.1 if s is a simple average of the three measurements what is the margin of the r so that the interval x minus i and x plus i captures a the probability of 0.95 so so we have a normal distribution here with a physical quantity so this is how the measurements the mean a and the standard deviation of 0.1 and x is a simple average of three measurements a1 a2 x is a simple average of them then the expected value of x is also going to be expected value of x is also going to be a but the standard deviation of x is going to be 0.1 minus under root a right margin of error which is the is a simple average of three measurements. What is the margin of error R? That captures A with the probability of 0 0.95. Right. 